Hey folks, Jimmy Cavanaugh here for IU Sportcom, live from Assembly Hall. Joining me, Olivia Humphreys on the IU Sportcom credential. Olivia, how are you doing? I am wonderful. Great victory tonight for IU. Pretty solid game, all told, everything considered. Hey, let's start off with the story that a lot of people noticed right off the bat. You get into the building, you get ready to sit down, and you find out that Will Sheehy is going to be starting over Christian Watford. Watford has only missed... For this game, one career start, uh, totally different for him to come off the bench. Just talk about what we saw from Will Sheehy in his starting role, what we saw from Watford off the bench, because both those guys delivered in a big way tonight. They uh, they really did, uh, especially Will Sheehy. He was very impressive. He's kind of been on the down low lately, not scoring as many points. I think he had 19 points coming in uh, before this game off of the first two games, and uh, Christian Watford had 21 points coming in. And Seawatt's been kind of sluggish a little bit lately, I've noticed, and I think that that's a little bit maybe why Tom Crean pulled him out before, maybe not, I don't know, and maybe he wanted to, you know, bring Will Sheehy up and get that energy level for him going, but both of them had a phenomenal game. Seawatt led the team in points with uh, 23 points, I think it was. 23, it might have been 24, I'm not totally familiar. Around there. We'll, we'll, we'll figure this out. While we do that, just the energy that we saw from both of them was the big thing. Tom Crane loves the deflection stat. Mm -hmm. Watford led the team in deflections tonight. He just had a great all-around game. His opener, his opener, he had 15 boards, but he didn't shoot the ball well. Second game, he didn't play well in any phase of the game. Yeah. Tonight, 9 of 9. I Actually, no, 10 of 10 from the free throw mm -hmm. line. 24 points, I believe, was his final stat line. Mm -hmm. And he hit a couple threes, too. I mean, he looked great all around. And Will Sheehy stepped up as well, like you said. Mm -hmm. Will Sheehy uh, especially did a great job shooting those midcourt shots, like from the um, field goals and stuff. He posted a lot of points for the Hoosiers right there. I think he had 18 points on the night around there, um, just shy of, you know, his points that he had coming into this game, which is really impressive for him. But uh, like you said, Christian Watford was the was the main star of tonight, I would definitely say, with as many points as he had, as well as his defense that he provided for the Hoosiers. We're talking individual stars right now, but if we want to switch the topic over to defense, a team-oriented thing, which the Hoosiers had struggled with a little bit. Uh, they, they played well enough to beat their first two opponents, Bryant and North Dakota State, rather soundly, but they didn't play as well on the perimeter defensively as you might have liked to see. Not the story tonight. They no. went after Sam Houston State from the word go, had an outstanding defensive performance, held them to about 30% from the floor. <laughs> they didn't shoot well from three-point range either. This is probably the most impressive defensive performance that we've seen in the past couple of years, definitely this year. But I am having a hard time remembering a better-looking half of basketball, really, than we saw in the opening stanza here tonight. I think a lot of that, too, comes from a lot of the talk heading into this game was about Sam Houston State and about how they were a good perimeter team and how they, you know, shot, I think, 25 attempts on uh, the three-point line in their last game. And so I, I really think that Coach Green worked with them in the practices this week to get them better blocking on those perimeter shots. That's something that Will Sheehy said, too, mm -hmm. that they were preparing for these guys like they would prepare for anybody else. That If you don't come in prepared, you're not going to beat them. Tom Crean said the same thing. That they prepared for this game as hard as they've done any other game, uh, definitely the hardest they've done this season. It showed off on the floor, not, not only on the defensive side, but offensively as well. These guys had 99 points tonight, and here's another fun little stat for you. The most efficient points per possession night of the Tom Crean era. Just an all-around outstanding night. Nearly 60% from the floor. Just the, everyone hitting on all cylinders. Balanced scoring. Nothing that you wouldn't expect from this team. Just everybody playing to their full potential tonight. And it, it was very impressive. I mean, I think we had every single player on our roster come out and play. Um, Taylor Ware got time. Ta Taylor Ware did get time. I know you were pushing for him I, to get time. I, I love me some Taylor Ware. No <laughs> lie. But it was a, I think it was a fun night for, for the Hoosiers, definitely coming out here and just demolishing Sam, Sam Houston's There's state. no other way to put it, really. I mean, they just, they put the smack down on yeah. them. I mean, they, they took them behind the woodshed in the first half. They had 50 points in the first half, I think it was. And, you know, they were leading by nearly what the spread of the game was. Vegas had them as 31.5-point favorites. 
They went into halftime nearly covering that. They blew that out in the second half. I mean, this is they covered the spread pretty easily. So any gambling degenerates at home, lucky day. <laughs> uh, just finally, there are a couple other little storylines that were pretty nice, individual notes. Jordan Holes with his thousandth career point tonight. Mm -hmm. I know you were pulling for that. I was. I was. He was ten points shy of it heading into this game, and he knocked. Uh, two threes right off the bat and everyone was excited for him you know four points away and then he came out of the game for a little bit and luckily coach green put him back in and he managed to knock down a free throw for the hoosiers and and came back with a long three and just drilled it like jordan holes does and, and he was kind of funny too because he wasn't totally aware of it either. no <laughs> and he was thinking about the missed free throw yeah. beforehand which ended up playing into the final storyline of the game. Mm -hmm. IU with 99 points. They needed 100 for free Qdoba, Qdoba burritos for the fans. It, you know, it's, it's a little rough. We're not, not, no one's getting free Qdoba tonight. It's, it's, it's tough to do. It was. With. It was. However, Will Sheehy wasn't too beat up about <laughs> it, saying uh, he was more of a Chipotle guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how the <laughs> PR staff's going to feel about that. These are pretty well constructed yeah. deals. I mean, I, I don't know if that's going to go over well. And then even Tom Creed afterwards, yeah, there's Casa Brava. It's like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> You're talking about all these different Mexican joints. Can't go wrong with Mexican in Bloomington is what he said. That's that, that's a good take. We, we might as well end there. End there. Yeah. Any, any, no, no final thoughts? Are we just going to end on Mexican food? <laughs> Mexican food, I mean, I am a huge fan of Mexican food, and Bloomington does have an excellent choice. Yeah, all right, that, that'll do it. That'll do it for us. <laughs> I'm Jimmy Cavanaugh. She's Olivia Humphreys. Thanks for joining us. Folks, we'll catch you next time. Uh, we will actually have some folks covering the game, uh, the pair of games in Brooklyn at the Barclays Center, either uh, both Georgia and either Georgetown or UCLA. Josh Hanser will be there covering that for us. Be sure to keep an eye out for some outstanding content coming your way. That's all for us. Good night. Travel well. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll catch you next time.